Welcome back to another video here for you guys here today on Madden 20. Today it is going to be my first realistic rebuild of the season. It's going to be of the Colts. But before I get too deep into this video, if you guys are new around here and are excited for some more, you know, franchise content, and if you end up enjoying this video especially, you know, definitely consider subscribing. It would be awesome if you guys can come back for my next upload. Also, if you would like to follow me on Twitter, join my second channel, or join my Discord, or check out my second channel, let me get that straight, uh, then the links to those are down in the description below. One more quick note about the realism of this rebuild. So I'm not going to be making any trades, right? That's kind of the whole point of doing a realistic rebuild. I'm going to build entirely through the draft, through free agency, all that good stuff. But it's also going to be more so like if I were the GM of the Colts, I'm not going to try to like do exactly what I think the Colts are going to do, if that makes sense. I'm just going to kind of do what I think is going to be better for the team in the long run. Like let's say Jacoby Brissett does not have a good year, okay? He probably won't be the starter next year then. But, like, in real life, he could totally have a great year and then be the starter again. You know, so it's it's very situational. Obviously, it's Madden. This isn't super realistic simulation as it is. So I just wanted to get that out there. I'm sure that's pretty much implied, but just in case you guys didn't know. Okay, so now we can, you know, start looking at the team. Of course, they don't have Andrew Luck anymore. That sucks a lot because Andrew Luck was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He was so exciting to watch. He kind of finally had a team around him. It sucks that he retired this year. I understand why he did it. Right, he just wants to get healthy, and I really hope the best for him. I want him to get healthy. I want him to enjoy the rest of his life. You don't want him to have, like, a crazy career-ending injury where he can't, like, walk anymore, you know? So, like, it's okay that he retired now. I understand. The Colts just took a massive loss, though. He was the best player on their team. I think that's fair to say. Um, and also, to those Colts fans who booed him when he was walking off the field, that is gross. You guys are, like, actually horrible because... That just shows to me that they didn't deserve to have luck in the first place. Those fans did not deserve Andrew Luck. Because Luck, honestly, like, single-handedly kept this team relevant the past few years. Now he finally has a good team around him. He really didn't have a great roster around him until, like, last year. And you saw what he did last year. He was phenomenal. So I just wanted to, you know, quickly spiel about that as well, because it was pretty recent. I'm actually kind of late to this whole idea, but whatever. Anyway, Jacoby Brissett will be the starting quarterback. The year that Andrew Luck sat out, he was a starter the entire year, and it did not go too well, but he's been very glitchy in Madden in the past, so hopefully he can do that for us here. Marlon Mack was alright last year, they also have Naheem Hines, who's more of like, I want to say a receiving back, right? He's also very fast. 93 speed, 72 catching, he's not a bad receiving back. T.Y. Hilton, Devin Funches, I guess Chester Rogers is also here, but I want Paris Campbell to start for sure. I'm actually sort of surprised Paris Campbell does not have star, but that's fine. He's a very fast wide receiver as well, 94 speed for him. But T.Y. Hilton, of course, the best one here. Devin Funches coming over from the Panthers. This offensive line is finally good. It hasn't been that good in the past when Andrew Luck was here. That's probably why he sustained so many injuries, to be honest. But now they have Quentin Nelson, one of the best left guards in the entire NFL. Braden Smith is also here. Both of those guys were drafted a year ago, right? I know, obviously, Quentin uh, Nelson was, but I just want to make sure they were both in the same class. They were. I think this Colts team probably had the best draft class in that one with Quentin Nelson, Braden Smith, Darius Leonard, all that stuff. But Anthony Costanzo is not a bad left tackle. Ryan Kelly is a good center. Mark Lewinsky is not a bad right guard. They have a really nice offensive line. I'll probably have to get a new left tackle because Anthony Costanzo is 31 and he's going to regress. Eric uh, Ebron was very good with Andrew Luck. Jack Doyle, also not a bad tight end. They have a very good tight end duo. Even Mo Ali Cox isn't even that bad. And he's their third string tight end. And then defensively, the defense on this team has been definitely reformed over the past couple seasons. Darius Leonard is now here, who they drafted uh, just recently. He is superstar dev. He is fantastic. I think he led the league in tackles last year. Isn't that a thing? I don't know, but he's very good, so I'm not really worried about left outside linebacker, but the other two linebacker positions, not that great. I feel like Anthony Walker should be in the 70s. Is he really a 66 overall? Colts fans, let me know if he's actually this bad. I thought he was solid, but I could totally be wrong. Malik Hooker was a great draft pick a little while ago as well. Starting free safety here out of Ohio State. Clayton Gethers is uh, the starting strong safety. He's 27 years old. I can definitely look to replace him sort of soon. Kenny Moore, Pierre Desir, Quincy Wilson, and Rocky Asin are the corners. Rocky Asin, I'm going to try to get involved a ton. He's a rookie out of Temple. Has at least star dev, which is nice. I don't think he's going to have superstar. He probably has star development. But I'm going to try to have him play probably the slot. Kenny Moore isn't bad. Pierre Desir, I'm pretty sure he's sort of old. He's 28, so he's, you know, usable for at least a season or two. Kenny Moore is like 24. Yeah, okay, and he has star depth. He should be fine. Quincy Wilson's also young. He's 23, so honestly, I'm good with Kenny Moore, Rocky Sin, and Quincy Wilson. Hopefully they can develop. Pierre Desir, I'm going to keep for this year. 
Um, but we're going to see what happens in the long run. Justin Houston's down to an 86. He's a good pass rusher still, though, so I want to keep him for as long as I can until he starts regressing really badly. Jabal Sheard's also not bad. I feel like another fairly underrated player, at least in the game. I feel like he should be around an 86 as well. Uh, but he's definitely not bad at an 82. And then Danico Archery is starting at defensive tackle number one. He's a 76 with star. Not bad, but he's 29. That's going to be an issue. Marcus Hunt is also here. They have Tyquan Lewis, though. I think I want to get Tyquan Lewis a bit more involved just because he's way younger than both of these guys up here. So I think Lewis is going to start probably at number one, to be honest. And then they also have Kamoko Ture, who is more of like an edge kind of guy. I'd love to get him, him involved, but Justin Houston and Jabal Sheard make it difficult too. I think this guy's also a rookie. Good old Ben. I'm not going to pronounce that because I'm definitely going to butcher it. He is a rookie out of TCU. I just don't really see a way to get him involved. I could start him above Jabal Sheard, I guess. I don't know. Let's see what he only has normal dev, though. I don't really expect it to uh, go up all that much after this season. And then specialist, let me um, change this around a little bit because I do not want Darius Leonard rushing off that right end. Okay, so I think I got the specialist uh, tab all situated. I'm doing something a bit interesting. I don't know how this is going to work out, but we're going to have Jabal Sheard play rush defensive tackle just because then his rookie can start at rush right end. I think that's fine, honestly, for the team. Jabal Sheard should be able to play well at rush defensive tackle. Justin Houston, rush left end, Rocky Sin, slot corner. And everything else you can see down there. I actually want to put Paris Campbell in the slot. Okay, now it's all good. I should probably also throw Taekwon Lewis at the backup rush defensive tackle. Yeah, I'm going to do that as well. And then uh, I'm just going to I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to sim to the midseason mark and I will see you guys there. I know I just said that I was going to catch you guys back up at the midseason, but I kind of forgot I wanted to talk about this as well. But the main reason why I waited so long to do realistic rebuilds is just because I was waiting for a good draft class. So the class I will be using for this one is C4's class. Somebody put it on Xbox. I've been in contact with the, with one of the guys working on this, and he's just been, you know, giving me updates on when it was going to be done, and 2020 and 2021 are done, so I think it was a good time to start a rebuild, but that's all I know about this class. That's literally it. I don't know anything about this class at all, which is good. That's actually perfect. I want this to be novel. I want it to be a different experience, and hopefully everything here is good. I don't know a whole ton about college football. If you guys have watched my previous realistic rebuilds on Madden 19, you should know that. But I, I don't really claim to know a ton about college football. So we're going to see what happens this year. We might go to draft a quarterback. We might go elsewhere. I honestly have no idea. We have one first round draft pick. Hopefully the team is actually kind of bad this year. It'd be cool if I could snag a quarterback. I'll figure something out. I don't know yet. But yeah, I don't know a ton about college football. So if anything here is wrong, I probably won't notice it. And I apologize for that. But <laughs> let's get scouting. So at the midseason mark here, the team is four and three. The Steelers are one and six. That is surprising. I was actually really hoping to do badly this year, but I don't think we're going to. We're probably going to go like eight and eight or nine and seven and miss the playoffs because that's that's like the worst way to start out a realistic rebuild is doing that because you get a really bad draft pick and you don't even make the playoffs. But a couple of experience points here on offense. Paris Campbell has two. T.Y. Hilton actually mentored him a little bit. I got a prompt for that, which is always pretty cool. And then defensively, we have one for a bunch of other players as well. Three for Rocky Asin. It's revealed he has star dev. That's what I figured he'd have. Who has to come back to the team, though? Eric Ebron is the top free agent. He usually hits free agency, so that leads me to believe the Colts don't have much money. They have a ton of money. Why don't they bring him back? Okay, well, Jack Doyle, I don't think I want Jack Doyle. See, in real life, I feel like the, the Colts might bring him back because he is pretty useful. Just in simulation, the backup tight end does not have to be an 85 overall. Eric Ebron is perfectly fine alone on this team as, like, the, the sole really good tight end. Anthony Costanzo, I'm not going to bring back just now just because he's going to regress so badly. And I want to see if he's still over an 80, maybe I'll give him a short-term contract. Jabal Sheard, same thing goes with him. I don't think he's probably going to be like a 77 at the end of the season. Devin Funches. What do I want to do with Devin Funches? In real life, I'm sure the Colts would wait until the end of the season to bring him back. Just because they kind of just gave him a one-year test contract. So, I might wait for that as well. I don't want to spend a lot of money on a... He's actually not t terribly expensive though. And we do have the money for this. I might just bring him back now. He should, he should be a pretty solid option. If it comes down to it, he can just be the number four option if I get two other better ones. Uh, Adam Vinatieri, I think I might just let retire. Just because I don't want to... I just want to... I like doing that. I just like letting players retire. Clayton Gathers, I don't really want that badly. I think I can sign a different strong safety pretty easily. And then Jacoby Brissett, we should definitely bring back. Everybody else down here, I don't care all that much about. I'll probably bring back Carol Phillips too, just because if you guys watch my Blues franchise, I love Carol Phillips. 
So as of right now, we have Jacoby Brissett, Devin Funches, and Eric Ebron back on the team. The rest of the guys I will, you know, revisit later. But for now, those are the only three I wanted. We did not end up making the playoffs this season. Please don't show me an 8-8 eight eight record. I'd be so mad. 8-8. Eight eight. Are you serious, man? We're going to get like a, the 15th or the 16th pick or something? This is going to suck. All right, well, let's check out these stats. Jacoby Brissett. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is this game, dude? Jacoby Brissett isn't really bad. I'm not trying to say he is, but he's not this good. Holy crap, and my voice kind of cracked there. That's how excited I am. I think I'm going to keep him as the starter next year. Good God. Marlon Mack was less than exceptional. 939 yards, 3 touchdowns, 3.6 per carry. Running backs in this game who are like a low 80 just don't perform well. T.Y. Hilton was fantastic, 99 for 1,209 touchdowns. Eric Ebron, 10 touchdowns for him. Paris Campbell got 7. Devin Funches was involved. Okay. Did, wait. Marlon Mack got 600 yards receiving. Okay, he was actually pretty good <laughs> in the uh, pass catching department. Sacks should be pretty low. They are pretty low, I guess, aside from Anthony Costanzo. I would like to replace him, though, at some point. 128 tackles from Darius Leonard. We have 13 tackles for loss for Justin Houston, 12 for Tyquan Lewis and Jabal Sheard. Tyquan Lewis had 8 sacks. Okay, that's a good season. 12 tackles for loss, 8 sacks, 60 tackles for our defensive tackle, 6 for Justin Houston as well. 3 interceptions from Kenny Moore and Pierre Desir, 1 from Darius Leonard, Clayton Gathers, Malik Hooker, and Quincy Wilson. None for Rocky Sin, which is kind of disappointing. One defensive touchdown from Pierre Desir, zero safeties, uh, two blocked kicks from Ture, one from Houston and Autry, and then we also have two forced fumbles, Matthew Adams, Marcus Hunt, each got one. All right, so fifth on offense. After losing Andrew Luck, you would not expect this team to be top five in offense, and then eighth on defense, and this team goes eight and eight. What even happened? Okay, Jacoby Brissett wins MVP, just casually. Maybe he'll go up the superstar dev, I feel like he should. He's also offensive player of the year. My god, man. Defensive player of the year goes to Von Miller. Darius Leonard, though, at number seven. Offensive rookie of the year, Paris Campbell. Okay. That could work out really well for us. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Josh Allen. Bobby Okariki? Maybe I pronounced that right at number five. He's a middle linebacker, I believe. And then Rocky Sin at number ten. I think Bobby. I'm just going to say that. I think he was playing backup uh, sub linebacker. So let's check out the experience points. Jacoby Brissett. I hope you have a ton. He has four. Okay, he's going to be a 77. He's going to be the starting quarterback next year. I was actually planning on drafting one, but I definitely don't think I need to now. Uh, defensively, we got three for Darius Leonard. Rocky Sin has five. Okay, so he might be an outside corner for us next year. He played the slot pretty well. I mean, he didn't get an interception, but five experience points leads me, leads me to believe that he played sort of well. The Cowboys and the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. Okay, let's advance the week. Who is going to win? It's going to be the Chiefs. All right, well, at least the Cowboys lost. I'm an Eagles fan, if you guys didn't know. But let me see if anybody went up to Superstar, and my good god, Jacoby Brissett has 11, and he's up to Superstar. Holy crap. Well, I did not expect that to happen. He got 27k for MVP, 16k for Offensive Player of the Year. I feel like that's actually fairly realistic. Let's just say Jacoby Brissett wins MVP this year. I'm sure next Madden, he'll probably be like an 86 with Superstar, if I had to guess. I don't know. But then defensively, anybody go up? Darius Leonard's an X-Factor. Gotta love when that happens. I wish Rocky Sin randomly went up, but that's fine that he did not. Did Paris Campbell go up? I didn't even look. Paris Campbell is not that star. Man, he won Offensive Rookie of the Year. I really was expecting that. That's fine, though. Let's, uh, you know, check out these contracts here again. What is everybody down to? Anthony Costanzo's the big one. He's an 82. I think that's fine to keep for another year. I'm comfortable giving him a one-year contract. If he doesn't accept this, I'll just tag him. Okay, I'm just going to franchise tag him. What is it? Ooh, 16 and a half million? Oh my god. I know we, we have the money for this, I think. We do. We definitely do. I think I'm going to take my chance and try to sign him in free agency. I just don't... I, I can't. I don't, I don't want to spend that much money. Adam Vinatieri did not retire, but I don't want a 72 overall kicker on this team anymore, to be honest. Uh, and then Jabal Sheard? I'd be comfortable... If he randomly accepts this, I'm going to lower these both. If he accepts this, I'll give it to him, but he's not going to. I don't want to pay him much. Yeah, he's not going to do it. How much is his, is his tag? 14? Yeah, no. Okay, so let's just go into free agency. I probably should tag Anthony Costanzo. But honestly, I, I think I like my chances more of just not doing that. $81.94 million. Uh, Kareem Hunt, of course, the top player. I'm not going to go after him, but Chris Jones. Yes, I am going after Chris Jones. 
I could also use a linebacker. Ryan Shazier, I mean, I guess he, he shouldn't even really be here, but obviously pre-existing injuries are off when you do these rebuilds. I still need a left tackle as well. Anthony Costanzo is the top left tackle. Any good guards? No. Austin Blythe is here. He could play over Mark Lewinsky. I'm comfortable with that happening. Jack Conklin's here too. I think I'd rather get Jack Conklin and move him to right or to left tackle. I think I'm gonna spend a lot of money this year, but we can definitely afford it. Also, Taekwon Jones or Taekwon Lewis? I'm, did I say Jones before? I hope not. He went up to star dev. You can see that down there. But uh, okay, I think we're in a we're in a pretty good spot to go after a few of these players here. So let me get spending. Okay, so I actually went after I think four players. Let's see how many of them we got. This is gonna make the team much better if we can get all these guys. We got Corey Littleton, we got Darren Lee, we got Chris Jones, we got Kendall Fuller. I didn't even spend all that much on any of those guys, to be honest. I think that was a great period of, of uh, free agency. So our linebackers are set, in my opinion. Because now we have Corey, Corey Littleton who can play middle, Darren Lee can play right. That's fine. And then now we also have Chris Jones at defensive tackle number one. Taekwon Lewis at defensive tackle number three. We still need a rush left end, which is fine. I can figure that out. Also, Pierre Desir is... He had a good season, but I honestly feel like he's rather expendable right now. I brought in Kendall Fuller to play the slot, so then Rocky Sin can be an outside corner. So this is probably going to be the cornerback situation for this next season. Kendall Fuller, Rocky Sin, Kenny Moore, and then Pierre Desir. I guess it's just going to be the fourth guy. I think we made the team a lot better, honestly. And now... I did not bring in a left tackle. Oh, I forgot about that. Let's just try to adjust that in the draft here. Oh, I just remembered who I was supposed to go after. No, I forgot. It was supposed to be Jack Conklin, and he's not there. Okay. Um, also, Austin Blythe could have been an improvement. I didn't want to go after too many players, though. I didn't want to spend that much money, but... I'm probably going to have to spend a bit of money here to get a tackle. Honestly, I think at this point it's worth just taking one in the draft and hoping for the best. Okay, I'll go after Jamie Parnell just to get a tackle if I need one. I'm not going to give him much money at all. He's just going to be a plug-in left tackle if we can't get a rookie this year. Yo, okay, I just got an update on my phone about this. This is going to be probably long after this actually finalizes, like when you guys are actually seeing this video. But apparently, the Texans are finalizing a trade for Laramie Tunsil. That would be interesting. Of course, the Texans just recently traded Jadavion Clowney to the Seahawks for, like, nothing, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, wow. Laramie Tunsil to the Texans would be huge. That would definitely help their offensive line problems. But anyway, we are in the draft. Picking number 18. So I think here I would really like an offensive lineman. I cannot justify trading up to get... Oh, what's his name? I forgot his name already. I can't justify trading up to get Andrew Thomas. I would love to. But I think the plan here is to hope to get Walker Little. And just pray that that works out. But let's sim these first five picks away. Let's see who goes number one overall. Chase Young went number one overall. I would have loved him too. He's a 79. That's fair. Andrew Thomas also a 79. Steelers going with Justin Herbert, 74 overall. The Raiders going with Grant Delpit. If I had my choice at who to take 1 million percent, it would have been him. Grant Delpit would have helped out this team a ton. But that's fine. The Vikings... Going with Jerry Judy. Okay, well, that makes sense why I couldn't get any of those guys. Obviously, I don't have a top five pick. Let's go to pick number 18 and pray that Walker Little is still available. All right, so Kristen Fulton just went, please, I need a left tackle. Patty Fisher is available? Wow, okay, that's interesting. But anyway, though, DeAndre Swift is here. Tua's here. Jake Fromm and Travis Etienne. Lavishka Chenault, Walker Little. There he is. Okay, we're probably going to go Walker Little with this pick. I would love to have DeAndre Swift on this team, just because Marlon Mack just doesn't seem to be cutting it right now. If DeAndre Swift is available in the second round, I will probably pull the trigger. But for now, Walker Little, welcome to the team. He's a 70, so he's not that good, but I really needed a left tackle. I thought he was going to be better than this, to be honest, but he is not very good. Not the best first draft pick to have, but... He could still start at left tackle. I'm okay with him uh, playing there. And then here in the second round, so Travis Etienne just went. DeAndre Swift is not available, but Tua is. So is Jake Fromm. So is Jonathan Taylor. All right, so I could go Jonathan Taylor here, get another running back. But actually, first, I would rather have a strong safety. 
because I could really use a strong safety. We did not bring back Clayton Gathers, and I think Kalik Hudson is going to be the move. Out of Michigan, has really good top three skills. I'm going to go with him here. He's a 72 overall normal dev. That's fine. He can also start playing at strong safety. I think that was a great draft pick in the second round. He was ranked number zero. I don't know what he was actually ranked, but I'll take the pick. So this draft hasn't been like extravagant so far, but once you get out of the first round in these generated draft classes, it's kind of hard to start, uh, you know, taking great players still, or to continue taking great players, I mean. Uh, so here, I could go running back. Najee Harris. I think is going to be the move here, but before I do that, let me just see who else is available. So I could go quarterback. I don't need a quarterback. I could go, I don't need Xavier McKinney anymore. Don't need wide receiver. Okay, and then the next is the is the third round. I think I'm going to go with Najee Harris. He was on my draft board, though, before I actually fully make this pick. Um, I have another left tackle. I have Najee Harris there. A couple of quarterbacks. Strong safety, strong safety, wide receiver. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go uh, Najee Harris. I think it's worth it here. He's a 68 overall. I really thought he was going to be better than that. Man. This draft class is a bit brutal after the first round, but that's fine. I guess we'll just take him as a backup. Yeah, so I imagine not many players at this point are going to be even above a 70. So let's just go with uh, Jalen Ragor. I guess, wait, Stanford Samuels is all the way down here. I remember him being so good last year in Madden. That's interesting. But I think I'm going to go Jalen Ragor, I guess. Yeah, he's like the best player available. He's a 70 overall with hidden dev trait. Means he at least has star. I think the the animations are changed, obviously, so he, he does not have X-Factor. He has 95 speed, though. He can fly. It's interesting. He's probably just going to be a depth wide receiver at this point. Paris Campbell played really well last year. I'm sure Regor would play just as well, but we're going to let him sit a year behind the top three guys. And then in the fourth round, do I have anybody available? Not really. I could wait on a lot of these guys, actually. So let's go to the trade down. Let's see what we can get for the uh, or for a fourth round pick. I can get a 2021 20, fourth. 2021 20, fourth. Okay, it doesn't make much sense, but I don't really want anything for this year. I'm just going to take the 2021 20, fourth from the Bills, I guess. That is a stupid trade, but the trade logic in this game never makes sense. Honestly, with draft picks, they, they value them so weirdly. I don't understand it. But anyway, we are in the fifth round now. I think I'm just going to take one of these sixth round projected players. And they're gone. Okay, so... Derek King. Is it D De Eric? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. He's on the team now. 63 overall. He has a hidden dev trait though. Let's go. He has 90 speed. Dude's a monster. I'm just gonna send to the end here. Okay, so I just read more of the trade details on the Laramie Tunsil trade. Apparently, the Dolphins are getting two first round draft picks and a second rounder. Yeesh. That's a lot. But I think honestly, both teams I, I think did pretty well in that trade, I guess, just from my initial reactions. But um, let's go over the draft recap here. So we didn't really have the best draft. Admittedly, it was horrible. But we have a 72 overall strong safety. He was like the highlight of the draft. I think that's fine. Honestly, I think that's perfectly fine. I'm comfortable with him starting at strong safety. Walker Little will be the starting left tackle. Jalen Ragor might get some playtime. Probably not. I thought Najee Harris would be a little bit better. But that's probably just me thinking of last year's Madden because he was always like the first running back in, uh, in that class. But let's check out the NFL. Let's see... Who went after pick number five? Who also, also, let's just check out who's good in this uh, draft class. So Grant Delpit, Chase Young, Andrew Thomas, Jerry Judy. Tyler, is this Biadaz? Is that how it's pronounced? He's a good center. That's actually a good pickup for the Bengals. Dylan Moses, is this the dude who just tore his ACL? That's very sad if that is, because I knew Dylan Moses was supposed to be pretty good. Let me just make sure that's him. It could be another Alabama linebacker. Yeah, so Dylan Moses did get injured. That sucks. It's going to ruin his draft stock. But hopefully then he can fall later in the draft. The Eagles can scoop him up and he can still get back to this form. I don't know. AJ Epineza, Raekwon Davis, CeeDee Lamb, DeAndre Swift. Okay, so obviously the draft class falls off a bit. But that's how most draft classes are, so that's fair. The top few players are phenomenal. And then once you get to like... I don't know, the 15th-ish ish player goes down pretty significantly. That's fine, though. I'm, I'm comfortable with that happening. We didn't really get a great draft pick, but still, I think we got a first-round talent in Walker Little. And I think we did enough in free agency to make this team viable this next year. Uh, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. We also got Jeremy Parnell, who can even start. Uh, I might even do that. What do I want to do here? I should probably start Walker Little, just to get him as many experience points as possible. Yeah, I guess Kenny Stills did go to the Texans as well. Okay, that's an interesting trade for both sides. The Texans got a great left tackle and a pretty solid wide receiver. And then the Dolphins just got a ton of, of draft picks to try to build for the future. Alright, well, 
Interesting. Okay, so after the draft and the offseason and whatnot, the team is a 79 overall. 85 offense, 81 defense. I think it's in a really good spot here to make the playoffs. We didn't make it last year, but Jacoby Brissett won MVP. So, honestly, we did pretty well last year, if you ask me. Um, but not too much has changed on the offense, aside from just players going up in overall. And I guess Walker Little is new. I don't know why I said I guess. He is new at left tackle. But yeah, aside from uh, Walker Little, the team is pretty much unchanged on offense. I mean, we have Jalen Regor who could come in and play a little bit. Is it Rigor or Regor? I don't know. I'm probably... Who cares? I'm pronouncing it wrong. I don't know. But <laughs> he could probably play a slot for us. But Paris Campbell's up to his 74. He played well last season. I'm comfortable with Campbell starting here again. If uh, Rigor... Well, Jalen. I'm just going to say Jalen. If, uh, <laughs> if he ends up being a higher overall than Paris Campbell at the end of the season, then I'll start him next year. And then defensively, we added two new linebackers. Corey Littleton, Darren Lee. Very good linebackers here for us. Um, we added... Who else do we add? Chris Jones. Like, the best player on this defense now. We added Kendall Fuller. I think we upgraded this team in a massive way, but I need to reorganize this. So, Rocky Sin is going to be the number two corner. Kenny Moore will be the three, but Kendall Fuller will play the slot. And then, there we go. We have a lot of depth on this team that we don't really need, but it's okay. Also, why is this like this? Hold on a second. Ture and that Ben guy both aren't rookies anymore, so there's no reason to actually start that other guy because... You know, he's still gonna... He can't win Rookie of the Year, is what I'm trying to say. Like, they both have, like, the same potential at this point in the game. So I'm fine with Ture starting, then. That's fine. And then, uh, you know, Specialist, you guys saw a small snapshot of it, but here's the rest. I'm gonna have Najee Harris play Power Halfback. Why not? And here's the rest of it. I think the team's actually in a great position. If Jacoby Brissett can win MVP again, we should make the playoffs. Okay, wait. I have injuries off and pre-existing injuries off. Okay. But I just got a prompt that says uh, Shelton Gibson is available to play again. Oh, all right. Cool. Paris Campbell has a breakout player challenge. What do you have to do? 100 plus yards or 2 plus touchdowns? Okay. Paris Campbell is going to be the... I think I might put him as a number one wide receiver for this game. Just to see. Because if he can go up to star, that would actually be huge. So let's do that. Let me also import the next draft class. Okay, I'm advancing the week here. Did Paris Campbell get it? Okay, we won the- we did not win the game. We actually lost, but come on. Paris Campbell. Wait, did he do it? Oh, he did! Yes! He got star dev! But- whoa! Okay, plus 20,000? What does that mean? Is he gonna get- how many experience points? He has five! <laughs> yeah, let's go! I- you know, I didn't play that game at all. I just completely simulated it. That is dope. Okay. Now I will see you at the midseason mark. And my chair always interrupts me, man. Okay, so the record here again is 4-3. and three. That's what we were last season at this point. Uh, the Jaguars are 7-1. and one. I really hope, though, we can just win a bunch of games the second half of the season. That would be perfect. We are in second place. The Titans are 4-4, four and four, Texans 2-5. and five. So, of course, Paris Campbell has a ton of experience points. He has five still. We have one for Jacoby Brissett, two for Walker Little, one for a couple other guys as well. Defensively, we have two for... This is Kalik Hudson, right? Is that your first name? Okay, so Kalik Hudson... Did I say Huxon? I don't know. He has two. Rock is Sin has one. And then one for, I guess, a few other guys there, too. Who has to come back to the team this year? T.Y. Hilton. I definitely want T.Y. Hilton. Justin Houston is an interesting one, man. It's like the same boat as Jabal Sheard last year. I just don't know how badly he's going to regress. Ryan Kelly, I want. Malik Hooker, I want. Marlon Mack is another interesting one, man. I'm going to wait on him. If he has another bad season, I don't think there's a point to bringing him back, honestly. Quincy Wilson, I don't think we need anymore. So a lot of these guys down here, I don't think are that necessary. But let's start with uh, T.Y. Hilton. I think I'm only going to get T.Y. Hilton, Ryan Kelly, and Marlon... No. Malik Hooker. I almost said Marlon Mack. Okay, I signed back everybody I wanted to. And uh, now we're just going to simulate to the end of the season. Hopefully we make the playoffs, man. It's going to be close, I believe. I think we're going to have to make it through a wild card because the Jaguars are 7-1. and one. They're probably going to win the division. We got a first round bye? Yo, tell me we won out and went 13-3. and 11-5. We actually won the division. The Jaguars also were 11-5. The Titans 7-9. and nine. The Texans also 7-9. and nine. Let's just see how this panned out. Did we beat the, the Jaguars twice? That could have been massive. So we beat the Jaguars there at week 9. And then we beat them again at week 16. We played so well the second half of the year. Perfect. I expected this team to make the playoffs. This is perfect. Let's check out these stats. Jacoby Brissett was just dominant again, man. Why is he so good in simulation? Holy crap. 43 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 4,300 yards. Good lord. 
Marlon Mack was better, but still honestly not that good. I think we can easily replace him. I like Marlon Mack a lot, though. That's the problem. I think he's actually good, but the game just doesn't agree with me, I guess. Paris Campbell, over 1,000 yards with 14 touchdowns. Okay. T.Y. Hilton, over 906 touchdowns. Eric Ebron, 12 more touchdowns. Paris Campbell's turning into the new T.Y. Hilton, it seems here. Good God, he is actually very good. So, Braden Smith led up 12 uh, sacks at right tackle. Walker Little, 8 at left tackle. Not fantastic from both of those guys, but uh, expect more from Braden Smith. I expected this from Walker Little. Hopefully, he can develop, though, and be a little better. 115 tackles from Darius Leonard, 113 from Corey Littleton, and then 20 tackles for loss for Chris Jones. He was a great acquisition. 9.5 sacks for Justin Houston, 8 for our middle linebacker, Corey Littleton. Okay, 7.5 from uh, Kamoka Ture. Two interceptions for Leonard, two for Kenny Moore, two for Kendall Fuller, one from Corey Littleton, Pierre Desir, and Kalik Hudson. How is there no rock you sin, man? Defensive touchdowns. We don't have any safeties. We don't have any uh, blocked kicks. We have two, Darren Lee and Ben. Uh, here we go. I'm going to pronounce it. Banagoo? Banogu? I don't know how that's pronounced, man. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Forced fumbles. We have two for Darius Leonard, one for Kendall Fuller, Corey Littleton, and Justin Houston. And all but one of those was recovered. 11th on offense. I'm guessing defense is top 10 again? 5th. Wow. Okay. Defense was uh, very good here again. Josh Allen. One's MVP. Interesting. I didn't expect that to happen, but okay. I think I took their 4th rounder this next year, too. Jacoby Brissett, though, at number 2. Brissett nearly won back-to-back -back MVPs. Are you serious? Jacoby Brissett, 2nd for defensive or for offensive player of the year. Defensive player of the year goes to Corey Littleton. Darius Leonard at number 2, though. All right. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Justin Herbert. Najee Harris, though, at number four. Uh, to Eric King, I, I imagine that's how it's pronounced, at number seven. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Troy Dye wins it for the Jaguars. I believe he's a middle linebacker. Kalik Hudson, though, at number five. All right, so hopefully a couple of these guys got some experience points and maybe some dev upgrades or something. That would be awesome. We won't know that yet, of course, but let's see. Paris Campbell, I'm excited to see. You have eight experience points. Okay, let's go. We have four for Walker Little. I think that was a great draft pick then. He's going to develop pretty well. One for a couple other guys. Two for Jacoby Brissett. Where is... Did Jalen Ragor get cut? Or Rieger? Oh, please tell me he didn't get cut. I, I did not cut him. Is he still here? I wanted him to at least be a depth wide receiver. It's not that big of a deal, but like... I didn't cut him. Oh, uh, there he is. Okay, I didn't cut him. I just want to know how many experience points he has. Let's move him up to where Shelton Gibson is. Because he, he at least has star dev, so he probably has a couple. And he can definitely be a solid depth option for us. He has six. He's going to be really good. Oh, my God. All right. Defensively, we got three for Hudson. We got two for Rocky Sin. One for a few other players. Two for Lewis again, too. In the divisional round of the playoffs here, we have to take on the Bills, who have the MVP. Interesting. Um, but let's check out the team. After that upgrade session, Jacoby Brissett's up to an 87. Paris Campbell's up to an 84. My god, this team is developing super well. And then defensively, Cleek Hudson's up to a 75. Rocky sends up to a 77. Honestly, they actually have a really good young core of players on this team. And then that first, honestly, the free agency was the biggest deal for this team um, after the first season. I think that propelled us into the playoffs uh, very much so. But let's... Check out the overall for the Bills. They can't be that high of an overall. All right, they're a 78. We're an 83. They don't have an X factor. And we have one. I think Darius Leonard is the only one. Let's advance the week. Can we take them down? We can. Okay, and we have to go up against the Browns now, who are probably the best team, honestly, in this entire game for simulation. 83 overall for them. They have three X factors, at least, unless they have somebody else who randomly went up to that as well. Advance the week here into the Pro Bowl. Did we win? We lost. 52 to 31. We kind of got destroyed. It's the Bears and the Browns in the Super Bowl. Let's just keep simulating here. Who is going to win the Super Bowl? It's going to the Browns. So at least we lost to the team who won the Super Bowl. Uh, let's check out these dev upgrades or potential dev upgrades. Paris Campbell has superstar. Jacoby Brissett has superstar X Factor. Oh my god, man. I can't believe Paris Campbell's up the superstar. That is disgusting. Anybody on defense? I don't... Th Actually, Justin Houston's up to superstar. All right. That's pretty notable. Rocky Sin, I would have loved to go up to superstar, but that wouldn't have really made all that much sense. Okay, so... I, the team should be poised again to go back to the playoffs. This offense is stupid. We can also revisit some of these contracts. So, let's see. I think Justin Houston, I will give a contract to. Also, Blankenship, I will give a contract to. Let's just start out with him. So now I'm going to want him. Let's give him like a four-year deal. He seemed fine for us this past year. 
And then Justin Houston, I think I'm going to bring back as well. Give him a two-year deal. That's probably kind of stupid, but... Oh, he's going to test out free agency. 19 mil? Oh, no, man. I want him back on the team, though. How much money do we have? We could probably afford this for one last year, that franchise tag. I know I said I was going to do this last year with Anthony Costanzo, and I kind of forgot to, but I'm going to make sure I remember. I'm not going to franchise tag Justin Houston. I'll just give him a contract in for agency. I don't think I want anybody else here. Like, Marlon Mack is good, but man... He's, like, he's good in real life. He's a solid overall, but he just doesn't play well. That's kind of the situation I was alluding to earlier with, like, what I would do as a general manager, that kind of realism. is In real life, I feel like, you know, Marlon Mack will probably be on the Colts for a good while because he's, he's at least a solid player. But just, I, I, can't, I can't justify bringing him back after two seasons with, like, three and a half yards per carry. I feel like if that happened, they would not bring him back. So Kareem Hunt is here again. Do we go for Kareem Hunt? I feel like we do. Yeah, there's not many other good running backs here. Kareem Hunt's not getting any offers. I'm saying we do it. Go ahead and sign Kareem Hunt here. He's only 26 years old. He's coming over to the team. And we will also go after a defensive end. Derek Barnett. Not a bad defensive end. Justin Houston is getting a contract. But uh, I'm comfortable giving him more than that. So let's give, give him 111 total points. I can probably lower that, but it's not that big of a difference, to be honest. I could go after Derek Barnett as well, but honestly, Torrey played well, and I think I'm going to take my chances in the draft. Maybe we could draft an edge rusher. Kind of doubt it, but we'll see what happens, I guess. Um, I could go after, like, Ebucam and throw him down to defensive end. I don't think I'm going to go that route. He's pretty good, though. He would be very good as an edge rusher, but it's fine. I don't really need a corner on this team. I'm fine with cornerbacks. I don't think I need much on this team, honestly. Malcolm Jenkins could probably help. Bradley McDougal as superstar. Okay. That's very random. Okay, I also went after one extra player. Let's see if we got him. We got Justin Houston, and we got Marshall Yanda. I just sent a contract out to Yanda just to, you know, get an upgrade at right guard. It's only a one-year deal, and he's an 84 overall. I think it was worth it. We did not yet hear back, though, from Kareem Hunt. And we're still a top team on him. I'm not going to give him any more money. Let's just see if he accepts this next week. Kareem Hunt accepted. So he's now our starting running back. And this offense has transformed into something ridiculous, man. I'm excited to see what happens this next year. We are entering the draft here, and we probably have a late pick. We pick at number 30. We have a very late pick. So let's just simulate. Let's see who goes. Xavier Thomas going number one overall. That's fair. Penn Sewell going number two overall. Again, I don't know much about these players, so I... Probably going to pronounce these names really badly. Please don't kill me. Uh, number three overall is Trevor Lawrence going to the Bengals. I feel like the Bengals, if they can pull it off in real life, that would be amazing. Him and Tyler Boyd would be fantastic together. And if AJ Green is still there. Rondell Moore, though, rounding off uh, the... Actually, I thought that was the fifth pick. Rondell Moore going to the Raiders. And now the Cardinals. Justin Ross, another wide receiver. I think that's a pretty good draft pick for them as well. So let's go to pick number 30. We're probably not going to get anybody good. I'll tell you that right now. Creed Humphrey, 74 overall center. That's a great pick there from the Rams. Who is still here, though? Justin Fields is available. JT Daniels. Jamar Jefferson is here. Okay. And then a bunch of second round guys. So, I don't expect any of these guys to be good. I kind of want to go with KJ Hamler just because I'm a Penn State fan. I feel like he's faster than 4 4 6, but who knows? Who knows? Or I could go. I don't even need a center. There's not much I need right now. Asante Samuel Jr. I could go for. He has really good man coverage. I don't really need a corner, though. I also I could go with a quarterback. I don't need a quarterback. Justin Fields looks disgusting, though. I sort of want him just to back up Jacoby Brissett, if I'm being real here. I don't need anybody, honestly, in this situation. So it's Justin Fields or KJ Hamler. I'm just going to go Justin Fields because he's going to be a lot better. He's a 72, hidden dev trait. What kind of stats does he have? 91 throw power, 75 deep, 80 medium, 80 short, but 92 speed. Wow, he'd be very fun to use her. Let me also point out, that was a stupid draft pick, right? Look, if the Colts, if Jacoby Brissett develops this well in real life, no chance the Colts go with a first round quarterback. Just wanted to point that out, but it, it really doesn't matter at this point. Here, I guess I could go, I don't know, safety maybe? This guy doesn't look too bad. I could just take him as a backup safety. There's really nobody else here who I want. So welcome to the team. 69 overall. It's not a bad draft pick in the second round, to be fair. 
He's just going to be a backup here. I think I'm just going to send him to the end of the draft. I don't really want anybody else here. Let's see if the computer snagged me a gem. Definitely doubt it, but we can check it out. We have a 62, 65, 66, 61, and then two 50s. Okay. Let's check out the NFL. So Xavier Thomas went number one overall. Trevor Lawrence, though, I need to see his stats. He has to have, like, superstar or something. 95 throw power, 86 deep, 80 medium, 88 medium, 88 short, 76 speed. My good lord, he is disgusting. Rondell Moore is also disgusting. Patrick Sertain Jr. is the number one corner in this class. That's fair. Adam Anderson here. Caden Stearns is a nice-looking strong safety. Also, just, you know, because I want to figure this out, I want to see what KJ Hamler is all about. Okay, KJ Hamler is a 70. I, I definitely think he's faster than 91 speed, but... Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm not even all that sure, but KJ Hamler, 91? Ah, I feel like I'd give him 94, but maybe he's not that fast. We'll obviously have to tell when he runs the 40, but let's advance the week. Finally commence this third season. This will likely be the last season. I gotta upgrade these players first, though. Let me do that. The team for this final season, 84 overall, 91 offense, 85 defense. This team should make it back to the playoffs, honestly, just because of the talent on offense. Good God, Jacoby Brissett, Superstar X-Factor, Kareem Hunt, Superstar, T.Y. Hilton, Superstar, Paris Campbell, Quentin Nelson, both Superstars, and then a load of star players. Honestly, this team is in a fantastic situation, I believe, for this season. And then defensively, honestly, does not get much worse. We have an X-Factor over here, Justin Houston is a Superstar, we have a great cornerback core, still pretty young, honestly, Rocky Sin is still going to be the number two, I think. And then Malik Hooker is a great free safety. Also, this guy's hidden dev trait. We have a, you know, fairly young starting strong safety. Why did I say fairly? He's very young. He's 23 years old. He only has one year of experience. Linebackers are still good. This team is nice. Okay, I just got to say, this team is, is very good. Let's advance the week. Hopefully, we make it to the playoffs here. All right, let's go. We made the playoffs. We got a first round bye. What's the record? 11-5. and five. That's what it was last season. But it's, it's all right. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it here again. The Texans 8-8, eight eight, Jaguars 7-9, and nine, Titans 5-11. and 11. Jacoby Brissett is like the best quarterback to have in this game. Why is he this good? 4,400 yards, almost 4,500. 42 touchdowns, 13 picks. The craziest thing is that this is probably his worst season. And it's that good of a season. <laughs> Kareem Hunt definitely helped this team out a ton. 1,400 yards, 16 touchdowns for him. T.Y. Hilton was fantastic. Paris Campbell, again, fantastic. Eric Ebron, eight more touchdowns. Devin Funches did a little bit. Kareem Hunt got a bit involved. Sacks allowed, not many. This offensive line is still really nice. 97 tackles for Darius Leonard. 12 tackles for loss for Tyquan Lewis. We have 11 sacks here for Justin Houston. He's played very well for us. Interceptions, we have three for Darius Leonard and Corey Littleton. One from Justin Houston. That's interesting. All right, he got a sack. Did I just say Justin Houston got a sack? I meant interception. Rocky Asin, though, gets his first interception of his career. Kendall Fuller gets one. Cleek Hudson, Malik Hooker, and Pierre Desir each get one as well. Okay, so let's check out these safeties. None. Blocked kicks. None. Fumble return yards. Hey, one. I always do that. Touchdowns. We don't have any. Okay, forced fumbles. We have one. Malik Hooker, who recovered it and also returned it for a yard. Defense, or offense, was first. I don't know why I said defense. Defense was 11th. Both of those have been very good this entire time. Jacoby Brissett, fifth for MVP. He's been top five all three seasons. It's ridiculous. Offensive player of the year, Jacoby Brissett comes in second. Kareem Hunt comes in fourth. Defensive player of the year, Darius Leonard comes in seventh. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Trevor Lawrence. He's an 84, man. He doesn't need that. Justin Fields at number six. Defensive rookie of the year. Nobody from the Colts in this list. Best quarterback goes to Jacoby Brissett. Even though... Wait, Really? Jacoby Brissett wasn't, okay, Marcus Mariota's at number 8 for best quarterback, but he was the Offensive Player of the Year. What? How does that make any sense? Um, best running back is Kareem Hunt, let's go. Best wide receiver, Albert Wilson. Paris Campbell at number 10, T.Y. Hilton just barely didn't make it. Quentin Nelson, the uh, best offensive lineman in the NFL, or in the AFC. Marshall Yanda, Ryan Kelly, Braden Smith all on the list as well. Best defensive lineman, Carl Lawson, Justin Houston though at number 5. Best linebacker, Telvin Smith. Darius Leonard at number five. Best defensive back, Desmond King wins it. And then best kicker, Ryan Suckup is going to win that one. And that's it for our awards. That's fine, though. We have 7,000 coach experience to spend. Okay. Let's check out these experience points as well. We have two for Jacoby Brissett, three for Paris Campbell, two for Quentin Nelson over there, two for Walker Little as well. 
Defensively, not too much going around on this side of the ball, but that's fine. Let me spend these quickly, and hopefully we can make a nice playoff run. In the divisional round here, we have to take on the Chargers, who are 9-7, and seven, but don't let their record fool you. They are insane <laughs> in this game, like, all the time. So, we are now an 87 overall team. Just, this offense is nasty. It's a 95 overall offense. There really isn't a bad part. Like, find find a bad part of this offense. The fullback, maybe? And it's just our backup tight end, honestly. Like, we have a great offense. Defense, honestly, the same thing. We don't really have a hole on this side of the ball, either. We have a couple lower overall players, but they're good. They're, they still have potential. They could, you know, go up in development, even. So, what is the overall for the Chargers? They have an 83 overall team, but we have an 87 overall team. They have three X-Factors. We have two. Eh, it's alright. Let's advance the week. Can we win and go to the conference championship? We can. We have to take on the Ravens. We won 31-3. to It's bad for the Chargers. The Ravens are an 82. Let's uh, go ahead and advance this week. Let's go straight to the Super Bowl. Are we going to be in the Super Bowl? We are. Okay, and we have to take on the Panthers. Let's go. Let's actually, let me spend these uh, experience points real quick. Yeah, a couple players have one. May as well spend them. And now, let's see if we can take down the Panthers. Cam Newton. And the, didn't Cam Newton win MVP this year? I think that happened. So, they're an 83 overall compared to our, like, 87, 88 maybe after spending those. Let's just see if we can come away victorious and end this rebuild on a great note. This game has been very close the entire way. We have the lead now, though. 23 to 13. 23 to 20. They have another drive here. They can take the lead. 23-23. to 23. We tied it up. We should be able to take a field goal and win this game, and we will. 26-23. to 23. That was a very close one. I think the biggest lead the entire game was that we had a 10-point lead. So that was actually a pretty exciting Super Bowl. That would have been a fun one to watch. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you Colts fans out there and everybody else enjoyed. I just honed in on the Colts fans just because, of course, a Colts rebuild. Hopefully, I didn't piss off the Colts fans too much. Usually... There's a good number of the fan base that I just, you know, trigger. It's just inevitable. It's just what happens whenever you make these videos. But I think this one went very well. We didn't draft super well, but didn't really need to. The Colts are in a pretty good position. They're, I mean, in the game they are, okay? Because Jacoby Brissett, as you guys saw, he's nasty. But they have a great team around him. So it's pretty fun to actually rebuild this team. A couple of these players develop super well. But one final time, thank you guys so much for watching. If you ended up enjoying, feel free to leave a like on the video. These videos have been getting tons of likes and tons of views. It's honestly been fantastic. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.